So partial fraction expansion is one way to do inverse C transforms. And I, I kind of like that way the best because when you're done, you get an expression for the signal that is good for all time. Another way that you can do inverse C transforms though is by what I call long division. So let's do a few examples of using long division to get out an inverse Z transform. What we're going to do is we're gonna look at the signal in the um, Z domain and look at its region of convergence. And depending on its region of convergence, we'll know whether we need to create a right-sided signal or a left-sided signal. For instance, if the region of convergence is something that is inside of a circle, well, inside of a circle is a left-sided signal, which means that I need to get Z domain written as powers of positive Z, right? Because things to the left in time correspond to positive powers of Z in the Z domain. Or if I have a region of convergence that is outside of a signal, outside of a signal corresponds to a right-sided signal, which means in the Z domain I have negative powers of Z. So I want to see things like Z to the negative 1, Z to the negative 2, etc. So that's kind of going to be our strategy here when dealing with one-sided signals. We're really just going to do kind of high school long division and get out this sequence of Z's, which we can then easily transform back to the time domain. So in our first example here, inverting by long division number one, we'll go ahead and work through an example where we go right-sided. And then in the next video, inverting by long division number two, we will work through a left-sided example. But first, the right-sided example. So here's what we're going to be working with. We are going to be working with the Z transform 2 plus Z to the negative 1 divided by 1 minus 1 half Z to the negative 1. So that is the quantity that we would like to take back to the time domain. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to note the region of convergence, and that's very important. If you don't tell me the region of convergence, I don't know if this is a right-sided or left-sided signal, so you have to tell me the region of convergence that corresponds to the Z transform. In this case, it is the magnitude of Z bigger than a half, so it's outside of a circular region in the Z domain, which means this has to be some type of right-sided signal in time. Right-sided signal in time corresponds to negative powers of Z, Z to the negative 1, Z to the negative 2, etc. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to take this fraction, which says 1 minus 1 half Z inverse into 2 plus Z to the negative 1, right? It's just division. That's exactly what this means. Put 1 minus 1 half Z to the negative 1 into the quantity 2 plus Z inverse. And now I'm just going to do regular long division. So I ask myself, what number do I put on top here to go into 2? Well, 2 times 1 gives me a 2 down below. And then 2 times a negative 1 half z to the negative 1, 2 times a half cancels, gives me 1. I'm left with just minus z to the negative 1. And if I subtract these, the 2s go away. z to the negative 1 minus a negative z to the negative 1 is 2z to the negative 1. And now I just keep going. What do I need to put up here such that when I multiply by here, I can cancel out or get 2 times z to the negative 1? Well, what if I put plus 2z to the negative 1? Then 1 times this gives me exactly that. So in this case, it's kind of easy because I have a 1 right here. So whatever I see written right here is exactly what I need right here. So when I multiply by 1, I get it down below. So if I multiply that out, I get 2z to the negative 1. But I still need to multiply this times this. And if you do, you will get negative z to the negative power 2. And now we just keep going. We subtract. These terms cancel, and we're left with a positive z to the negative 2, which I then put up top, multiply by here. I get z to the negative 2, then minus 1 half z to the negative 3, and then I subtract. What do I put up top? I need to put that up top, so when I multiply by 1, I have that down below, so I put that right there. Multiply about through, I get that first term again. And then 1 half z to the negative 3 times this, I'm going to get minus a fourth z to the negative 4. And then I'll subtract and just keep going, right? So this is never going to end. I'm always going to have a rem remainder here. But what you can see now is kind of this pattern that's emerging. 
I had 2 plus 2z to the negative 1, z to the negative 2, 1 half z to the negative 3. The next one's going to be, you know, 1 half z to the negative 4. We, we have these powers and these halves appearing. And most importantly, I can go ahead and pick off these first few terms, right? As I said before, I'm never going to get a final answer here unless the remainder actually ends up being 0. And in some cases, it might. The key thing, though, is I've been able to rewrite x of z in a form that is easy to convert back to the time domain. And that's really the whole point of this long division approach. So I can go back to the time domain now, term by term. x of k, 2 in z is 2 delta of k in time. And then 2z to the negative 1 power is 2 delta of k minus 1, right? z to the negative 1 corresponds to something at time k equals 1, which is delta of k minus 1. z to the negative 2 is delta of k minus 2. 1 half z to the minus 3 is 1 half delta of k minus 3. I can just term by term go back to the time domain. I have to keep going for forever, technically, so this isn't going to be a closed form answer but I can at least know the first few values of x of k in the time domain. The values are 2, 2, 1, 1 half, etc. So if you were wanting to know just the value of a signal and just needed a first few values, and that does happen sometimes. Sometimes for working with difference equations, you need to know initial conditions or something, so you need to know a few values. So this could be a useful technique if you do need to know just a few values. Or if you're given a problem where you're told solve for x at time 0, time 1, and time 2, well, that information is exactly here. Maybe you don't need the signal in the time domain written down for all time. So this was our first long division example. It was a right-sided signal. In the next example, we will work with a left-sided signal and do something very similar. Thanks for watching.